Are y'all ready for your next comedian tonight? All right, your next comedian comes from New York, has been doing comedy a very long time. He now lives in San Francisco. Please put your hands together for the great Dave DeLuca. and you're gonna play that. I, I'm the whitest person here after Justin, Jesus. Uh, I give him Justin a hand for, uh, for doing that. That's what really And uh, keep it going for yourselves for supporting a great cause tonight. This is awesome you come out for this. Uh, it's one per I expect a lot better than that. One person's wooing and you're like, yay, yeah, you march of so. Much better. Much better. I understand it though. We're all in kind of a weird mood nowadays. Like I'm in a weird mood myself. I should be ecstatic. I just had a birthday last week, and uh, see, that's the way I felt. Who cares? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything anymore. I turned 34. 34 is not a milestone birthday. Nobody cares about 34. Certain birthdays are cool. Like 16, you can drive. 18, you can vote. Join the army. Smoke cigarettes. Buy porn. <laughs> now we know who the whore is. <laughs> Then there's 21, which is alcohol. Woo! Bigger whores. Uh, after that, there's 25. You know what you can do when you're 25? Rent a car. Yeah! Come on, everybody, we're going to Hertz! Here's how I know 34 doesn't mean anything. I got quite possibly the worst birthday get gift ever from a friend of mine. Uh, I got $20 in lotto tickets. <laughs> Just give me the cash. Because as soon as I lose, neither of us has anything. As, as, and I understand, because it was, it was the, the, the recent one where it was $640 million for the jackpot. Like, he's kind of, the theory is okay if you win, I'm doing you a big favor, but odds are he won't. Really what it is, is just a shitty excuse for him to play the lotto. Because he turned to me and he said, alright, you realize if you win, I'm splitting it with you. <laughs> no, you aren't. <laughs> and fuck you, that's my ticket. And, and I actually used to play the lotto too. I used to live, when I was living in New York, I used to play the lotto uh, every week. And what I would do is I'd go into, I'd go into work and I'd check the tickets at the office. Because I'm not going to sit there at 7.45 at night when they're checking the, checking the numbers. I've got shit to do. So I'd sit there and I'd check on the computer and I'd match up the tickets and uh, I didn't win. But uh, I remember one day, uh, this guy comes up to me at work and he's like, so, you playing the lotto? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you ever win the big one? <laughs> oh yeah. That's why I'm still here. Because <laughs> I love you fuckers so much. <laughs> that's, would anybody here actually keep working if they won by round of applause? <laughs> For those of you who are clapping, fuck you. <laughs> You're all assholes, we hate you, and if you keep your job, everybody that works there is allowed to beat the living shit out of you when you show up. <laughs> Seriously, nobody wants you there anymore. If I won the lottery, you would never see my ass again. I would be on some desert island with hot models that I hired to pay, uh, hired and paid to be my new friends so I can do coke off their asses, and I don't even have a drug pump, but I'll develop one. <laughs> Just so I can say I'm doing coke off a hooker's ass. <laughs> and I quit in style too. Like I wouldn't just say, oh here I quit, I want the lot. No, screw that. I'd be knocking shit off desks, breaking computers. I'd, I'd end up on my boss's desk like, alright, pull down my pants, suck it, what are you gonna do? <laughs> shitty gift and ends up being the best gift ever. I got, last year, my dad gave me a razor for my birthday. And uh, I thought, okay, I get it. This is for all the years when I gave you aftershave for Christmas and your birthday. When you should have upped my allowance. I was five. I didn't know any better. He's like, no, you don't understand. This is the best razor ever. It's got five blades. It's got a little trimming blade, a little strip so you don't hurt yourself, you don't cut yourself. It's the future of shaving. It's called the fusion. Fuck, was right. Smooth as a baby's ass, and didn't nick my balls once. <laughs> Look, I know that's a long way to go for a dick joke, but totally worth it. Uh, 
By the way, guys, shave them. Seriously. The women will appreciate it. And if they're going to do it for us, we should do it for them. And, and here's a tip. Go with the grain. Because otherwise... Like, I understand that's a really sensitive area. You do not want razor burn down there. But don't try and get creative and find ways around it. Like, I thought I had an idea and I tried something different. I tried this stuff called Nair. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you know that shit burns. <laughs> that, is, that is not cool at all. You got to, like, if you don't take that off in time, it's kind of like dipping your balls in the fryer at McDonald's. It's, and there's no way to explain that to a girl. You cannot, you can't, but you, what the hell happened? Ah, uh, french fry, I don't know. <laughs> I actually, I, I actually did uh, get laid for my birthday, which was kind of cool. And uh, God bless Craigslist. I, uh, <laughs> one girl's laughing really hard, I think she's been on there. You look familiar, I don't know. <laughs> she's waving right here. But, I love casual encounters. I'm gonna be honest. I've, ne I've never actually emailed anybody off, but anybody who says they don't look at casual encounters is lying. You've all been there. You're trying to buy a futon or rent an apartment. You're like, oh, let's see what's going on over here. It's, 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 my favorite one was when I was living in New York. There was a girl who was prostituting herself, not for money, but for prescription drugs. And what the ad says was. Email me and I'll tell you what I'm looking for. So I did. I'm like, all right, this ought to be interesting. So I shoot her an email. I say, hey, what do you want? What do you offer? She sends me back basically a menu saying that if you had this, I'll do this. So I wrote her back and I said, well, I've got about half a bottle of Oxycontin, I got half a bottle of Vicodin, and some muscle relaxers. So she writes me back, well, I'll do this, 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 and this. I was like, well, you know what, my back's been kind of bothering me, so I think I'm going to hold on to the muscle relaxers, and I kind of like the Oxycontin, so I'm going to keep half of those and a quarter of the Vicodin. So she writes me back, well, I'll do this, this, and this, and this. I did that with her like three times, and finally I said, all right, what can I get for a bottle of Tylenol? <laughs> she was pissed. I really shouldn't have gone over there. That was, that was a big mistake. Uh, <laughs> I was hanging out with a friend of mine recently, and uh, actually I should say this, uh, I was hanging out with a black friend recently, because if you don't know he's black, uh, the conversation really sounds a little awkward, and you're not sure what's going on. Uh, but we were hanging out in the park a little while back, and uh, he looks over, and there's a white guy lying down on a bench, and he points to him, and he says, you know what, that's why I want to be white. I was like, why? He's like, so I can lie down anywhere, and nobody will fuck with me. <laughs> really? You are selling yourself so short. Of all the things you're gonna pick lying on a bench, of all the things you can do, no, nothing with credit, nothing with not getting fucked with, you're gonna go with bench. He's like, well, what? I was like, he's like, what? Would you do anything different if you were black? I was like, Fuck yeah, I'd go all the way. He's like, what? You'd have a bigger dick? No, I sleep with Asian women. That doesn't matter. <laughs> he's like, what? You want to be better at sports? I'm like, dude, I'm white. I own the team. It's cool. <laughs> He's like, what? I was like, dude, I want to use the N word. He's like, what? I was like, seriously, I watch you all the time in public and you make it look like so much fun. I mean, don't get me wrong, white people say it all the time when you're not around, but in public, that would be awesome. Look at how all the white people tensed up on that one. There's only like three black people here. We can take them, all right? Relax. I know better than the fuck with a black woman. Trust me, I know better than the fuck with a black woman. That actually happened to me a little while ago. I was doing a show, uh, and I walked up on stage, and the black woman in the front row said, you better be funny. I can't say shit to that. I can't, that's, that's, that's what sucks, is being a white comic. I can't tell her, I can't say, look, this isn't a movie theater, keep it down. I can't. See, again, the white people are getting all tense, like, oh my god, he's gonna start a race war. This is gonna be bad. Becky, grab your purse, let's just go now. It is though, like the black people, they, they're going with it. The white people are like, oh my god, this is horrible. So much racial tension. Like, I can't make fun of anybody. And it's not the group I'm making fun of that gets pissed. It's all the white people. Seriously, like, I, and there's so many things I can't do as a white comic. I can't come out here on stage and do things like black comics come out. Where's all my black people at? Latinos, Latinos make some noise. Asians, where are you at? 
I can't say something like, white people, let me hear you. <laughs> now it's a rally. <laughs> Other groups can talk about having pride in who they are. You can talk, I'm a, a proud black man. I'm a proud Latino. I'm a proud Asian. I can't be a proud white man. Because if I am, then I'm in the KKK. <laughs> just got a haircut recently. This is as short as I can go. I was thinking of shaving it, but this makes me look like I'm ready to commit a hate crime. And I've had that new freshly shaved, hasn't gotten any sun, like really pale look on the top of my head. So it looks like I just joined the KKK, like I'm asking other members, where's the meeting at? I'm trying to lost. Can I get a beanie? The sun's burning my head. I I actually got pulled over the day after my birthday for speeding. That's, and I tried to get out of it too. The cop comes up to my car, he's like, where are you going so fast? I handled my life like birthday party. That didn't work. Went to his car, he came back 10 minutes later, handed me my license and a ticket and said, happy birthday. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> Seriously, and I was pissed and wanted to vent about it, so I called up a friend of mine, I got his voice and I left him and I was like, hey Mike, it's Dave. Uh, I just got a speeding ticket, call me back. A couple of hours went by and he sent me a text message saying, slow down. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Obvious. Was, where were you two hours ago? Was, Here's what I've decided though. Here's how I'm going to get even. Uh, if he ever sends me a text message or I get a voicemail or an email or anything from him, he's freaking out because his girlfriend might be pregnant, I'm just going to send him a text message back saying, pull out. <laughs> I'm worried some of you don't know how that joke works right now. Yeah. <laughs> My round of applause. Anybody here have kids out of curiosity? I didn't catch that what? Thank you. <laughs> That's the right attitude. And how many do you have? Two. Oh. Two girls. Oh! Oh, that, that does suck. I am so old. But here's, here's what I've learned. I'm not going to say shit about them, because if I do, you will kick my ass. So, that's, that's, you can hate your own kids, but if anybody else hates them, you're going to beat the living shit out of them. So, your daughters are beautiful. I, I, I can't wait on that one. I, uh, if you do have kids, though, I want you to do us all a favor and uh, hit them. <laughs> Seriously, just I'm sure you want to, and then everybody, like, just shit, the, honest, the timeout shit needs to stop. It's, it does. It's, it's actually on behalf of all white people, I want to officially apologize for the timeout. That is the biggest mistake we ever made. It does nothing. It's seriously... Some of you are clapping because you know the rest of you are like, oh my god, he endorses feeding children. That's an awful, awful thing. And I don't, I don't mean just like go up and from behind just like when they're not looking or anything like that. But when they screw around, because the timeout doesn't do anything. You tell the kid, timeout, go to your room. He's going to look at you like, fine, I've got an Xbox, a 42-inch flat screen, an iPhone, an iMac, an iPad. You know what, I'm going to go tweet about what a dick you are. <laughs> You want to punish a kid nowadays, here's what you do. Send him to the park, give him a glove and a ball, and say, figure it out. <laughs> it's insane. We're so overprotective as, as a group now. It really, like, that's the problem, is parents don't want to hurt their kids or see their kids get hurt in any way, shape, or form, and it needs to stop. Do you realize that they no longer keep score in sports because they don't want the loser's feelings to get hurt? <laughs> that needs to be a requirement. <laughs> How else do you teach these little bastards, hey, you suck, maybe you should try math. <laughs> they took dodgeball out of the schools. We need dodgeball. How else do you teach the fat kids, you know? The reason you keep going out first is because you're an easy target. All right, there's a lot of you groaning at that one. Fuck you, I was the fat kid, all right? I'm gonna finish this joke, I'm gonna finish this joke, but just so you know, I used to be about 90 pounds heavier than I am right now, that one day I decided I don't like to sweat when I make a sandwich. <laughs> so here I am. We used to play a game when I was a kid where the sole purpose was just to beat the shit out of each other. I'm not even gonna tell you the name, I'll give you a quick description. When you know it, just shout it out. Uh, 
wow, that was really, I didn't even get the description. Those are some girls that beat ass right there. That's, it was. It Spear the Queer, greatest game ever. For all of you who don't know, uh, the way it worked is there was 20 kids in one ball. One person would grab the ball, run like hell, the other 19 would track it down, beat the living shit out of it, someone would take the ball, and then the game would go on. Awesome. Now, because we live in this hypersensitive PC world, not only can we not play the game, we can't even call it that anymore. If you want to call it something, you have to call it detain the one who chooses an alternative lifestyle. And that shit doesn't even rhyme, so... I truly believe that like my generation was like the last generation of kids that was considered disposable. And I'm 34, I, you should have been paying attention to the first year. I already announced that up front, fucker, listen. I know, two daughters will make you dead. Uh, we know you got two daughters, you didn't wear a condom, it's all good, we covered it. Someone got drunk one night and said, honey, I'll pull out, and it didn't happen. <laughs> my bad. Uh, no, but truly, I think my generation is the last generation that was disposable. Anybody that actually remembers using a rotary phone? That, yeah. Anybody, anybody that came after them? Fuck them. Why don't you put, like, that was the generation, like, that was the end of it where you could look at your kid and if something happened, it was, oh, well, I guess we're gonna have to have another one. Like, you can't do that. Now, you can't take a kid. Like, I see eight-year-olds being pushed around in strollers. That's, the fucker can shave, let him walk. You put him in a racing harness when you put him in the car, in the little, like, ten-point racing When I was a kid, we literally, we would get down behind the seat. There are no seat belt. We would get down behind the seats and just bubble. You can't see me, you can't see me. My dad's sitting there like, get up, you little fucker. Come here, come here. I remember literally driving to school when I was seven years old. My mom was speeding because we were running late and a car pulled out in front of her, so she slammed on the brakes and I went head first in the dash and, and I had Volvo tattooed across my forehead. She didn't take me to the hospital. She took me to school. Didn't come in and tell anybody, oh, we had a little accident, but he's fine. No, just let me go into class. The teacher looked at me and said, what happened to you? I've got this bright red shine and Volvo backwards on my forehead. And all I can say is my mother did this in the car. <laughs> Nobody called social services. <laughs> no, the teacher just kind of looked at me like, yeah, little shit probably had it coming. I've been wanting to do that for years. I gotta get out of here so I can run up your headline, but I wanna look. Alright, uh, thank you. I got one more joke, so hold on. I, uh, uh, I'm gonna bring up your headline in a second, but I, got, I just got a couple things I wanna say. Real quickly, give yourselves a round of applause for coming out and supporting the great event. Uh, give your host, Justin, a hand for doing a great job. This is my name to give you and uh, finally, thank you again for coming out, and when you do go out and see live comedy, I just want to say this, please, come talk to the comics after the show. This is one of the reasons we do it, is to meet you people, because you guys are awesome, and sometimes you give us our best material. I already know which group is doing it for me tonight. But I just want to say, let me just get this story done, and we'll, we'll finish up. I'll talk to you after. Uh, I'm going to get my ass beat in the parking lot, so many I, uh, no, let me just, here's the thing. My favorite moment ever came last year. I was doing a show and a guy came up to me afterwards. He says, you know what? That was great. Thanks for coming out. I had a lot of fun. I was like, hey, thanks for coming out and watching the show. Uh, nice to meet you. My name's Dave. He said, nice to meet you, Dave. My name's Richard. You can call me Dick. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> How did we get to that point? I know you've been there. I know you've all met a Richard who said, call me Dick. It, it, it doesn't, certain names make sense. Michael to Mike, David to Dave, Richard to Rich. I don't see the dick. I don't, I don't. Like, how did we get, like a couple hundred years ago with somebody just standing there going, Richard's, you know, Richard's a nice name. But I really feel like a dick. <laughs> you think that'll ever happen in the future? Um, you don't think 200 years from now you'd be walking down the street and some girl would come up, Hi, my name's Rachel, but you can call me cunt. <laughs> Bye.
By the way, if anybody's upset that I just used the C word, you can relax, because that part of the joke takes place in the future, and they're cool with it. So. <laughs> All right, you guys, you've been a lot of fun. That's been my time.